start off with clarity. Uh, welcome back everyone to um, another Friday afternoon, our second uh, official Tapping Tales with John and Ailes. I am one half of that duo, Ailes. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome aboard John, how are you? about that i was just trying to find my mute button oh i thought uh, i thought you bailed button. at the last minute no i didn't bail in the last minute <laughs> but i i am doing fine thank you for asking yeah yeah how's how's your week been are you uh are you in the uh what do you call it rabbit's race to uh the holidays uh yes i guess you could say that you know getting Getting holiday shopping ready, getting ready for the occasion. Have you been fighting any uh, other shoppers as you've gone to the mall? Uh, getting that last bargain off the shelf? Uh, nothing too violent for me. But, uh, no. No, but hopefully, uh, hopefully nobody has to deal with that. Hopefully you haven't had to deal with any ruffians. The, uh, shopping malls? No, no shopping scoundrels for me, no. I think I've done most of the shopping that I needed to do from the palm of my hand. Uh, you know, these uh, phones these days, uh, they do uh, make the world smaller, like a PDA. They, they do. Yeah, and so I haven't had to fight off I don't, uh, anyone really. Uh, but yes, uh, actually, one of the things that I talked about during yesterday's stream was just the fact that after today and tonight's stream, uh, the Ails and Fails Twitch stream is uh, going on holiday vacation. Um, are you shocked? I am pretty shocked. Uh, I would say that uh, I was not made aware of this. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, I had already planned out my schedule to show up on the show several times, but you know, maybe this is something we need to take off tonight because I'm, I'm pretty heated right now that you revealed this. I, I can see, uh, I, I have a, you are showing me your image right now and uh, you do seem like boiling with rage there. There's a large vein in your forehead that is popping. Please calm down. Uh, we, we are live. Uh, yeah, and I do know that lots of people kind of just clear their holidays to watch the Ails and Fails Twitch stream. It's like, oh, hey, every <laughs> everyone gather around the fireplace. Let's uh, let's watch old Ale Wolf uh, battle some games. And that won't be happening in 2022. Uh, this year, I decided to maybe prioritize family first because I do have some family coming. Uh, visiting visiting the old Edelden for a few days, so I thought it would be best to simply, uh, you know, call them off and maybe uh, join us back on 2023 in the new year, and we will, uh, you know, be rested, ready, ready for another fine year. Uh, so that's uh, that's what's happening. One other thing that I guess is happening is that. Uh, uh, the Taproom Tales uh, with John and Ailes might be also going on a bit of a hiatus because of some things external to uh, life. So I, I know that that is also news to you right now that I am delivering. Yeah, I feel like uh, I'm just getting several career blows handed to me in a short amount of time. You know, I don't know what to say. I know that you cleared your schedule uh, in life for the next uh, six years to uh, make time for this uh, yeah, more than cleared my schedule, I quit my job. You quit your job, and uh, now I'm telling you that uh, we're probably going to have to shaft this segment for for at least a few months. Uh, we'll figure something out. Uh, Taproom Tales will be back at some point. I, I think we might have one more before we have uh, to uh, uh, take a break, so uh, stay tuned for more details on that. Um, yeah, so some hard-hitting news right off the bat. Uh, it's, a, it's a happening day, as they say, but at least it is Friday, and at least we're uh, diving into the weekend, so hopefully we can all calm down, relax, speak with our loved ones, uh, make amends, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how we are going to get started. So as usual, well, with the format of today's show is we're going to talk about things that uh, have we've consumed in terms of media. And as we play some Elden Ring, I guess right now we're playing Elden Ring, so 
that makes the most sense. And, uh, and yeah, but before we do that, let's go ahead and see what's on tap today. Uh, I think I'm simply going to drink a delicious Hefeweizen, uh, and that's a Paulaner Hefeweizen. Uh, Hefeweizens are wheat beers. Uh, they originated in Germany. And um, Paulaner is one of the six oldest breweries in Germany. One of the ones that hosts uh, Oktoberfest every year. Uh, now the only difference between this and more conventional beers that are made of barley, uh, the difference is that this one is made of wheat and of course gives it its own distinct flavor. It's, uh, it's a little lighter in several ways. Uh, wheat beers are generally trans, uh, translucent. They're not totally filtered, so you still have some of that yeast content when you pour them, which I will proceed to do right now. from Germany generally have a very strong taste of banana bread. Uh, Paul Liner Hefeweizen is no uh, exception, so bang it in. <sighs> Delicious, refreshing. Certainly a high recommend from me. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this game going. Let me just take a minute to update my ticker get started. Uh, so uh, I guess while I'm doing that, uh, what have you been up to this week, John? Anything of note? Uh, not much of note. Um, I guess uh, I guess I have progressed a little bit further in Elden Ring. So the last time that we were playing, I was struggling with Godric the Grafted, which is uh, one of the main story bosses right after um, Forget his name. What is it, Modric? Uh, the guy that you're at. Uh, Margit. Yeah, sorry. Modric is a soccer player. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it's it's a boss right after Margit, uh, and he was giving me a tough time, but uh, I was able to do it after leveling up enough and after enough diligence. Uh, well, congratulations. How many tries did it take you? Oh, I couldn't count. Uh, it took me probably like two or three sessions that we played together, so it was a pretty long time. Well, congratulations there, John. <clears throat> it seems that you are far away, uh, far and away, a lot, um, a lot farther than myself. All right. I'm sure you'll get there. Yeah, someday. Uh, <clears throat> I guess one of the things that happened since um, we last played was the Game Awards. And uh, in the Game Awards, it was declared officially that uh, Elden Ring is Game of the Year for 2022. Really? Yeah, didn't you hear about this? I didn't. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so we have been playing the Game of the Year. Imagine that. I guess it was a good, uh, a good uh, game to have picked. Actually, on that note, have you actually heard of any of the uh, other results from the Game Awards? No. If you want to talk about those results, though, you can go ahead and tell them to me. Uh, let's see if I can actually pull them up. I just. I just decided to shove my keyboard away just as I was talking about this. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, Game Award winners. Game Award results. So, uh, tell me if... Well, let's see if there's any anything that is interesting. So, of course, Elden Ring Game of the, Game of the Year. What I can do here is see what what were the nominees. 
get a small window here so that I don't lose the rest of my stream okay so game of the year Elden Ring competitors that I know God of War Ragnarok and I believe that one was the other one that people thought might have a chance then Horizon Forbidden West uh, which I've seen play there was Stray that cat game you're a you're a fan of cats aren't you John I would say so yes yeah so maybe maybe that your your vote was for that one <laughs> you know me you do love cats uh, and then there was Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, uh, which was also a darling, but I don't know if it actually stood a chance. Uh, let's see. Player's voice, Genshin Impact. I actually don't understand what a player's voice category means. Maybe player's input? Yeah, that must have been a popularity one, because as far as I know, the... Game awards aren't necessarily... Well, actually, no. Uh, I, I don't know. Are game awards usually awarded by popularity, or are there critics that... I think it's uh, people from the industry that select select the winners. Yeah, so that's probably what people's voices. They just voted for it. Oh, I see. Well, Genshin Impact won that one. Are you familiar with that game? I've never played it, but I know of it. Yeah, I've hear I've heard good things about it. I've heard that it's massive, um, but I myself have not played it. Uh, let's see, best game direction, Elden Ring. I, I'm, I'm assuming that they're rewarding the director of the game. They have some of the same ones: God of War, Stray, Immortality, Horizon Forbidden West. Best narrative. Uh, let's see. So the winner was actually God of War. They also have Elden Ring here. Uh, I've heard good things about God of War, obviously. Uh, I have never actually played any of the new ones. I am interested to... Do you have to... any interest? Do I have interest in God of War? Uh, yeah, maybe in a few years, when I actually play through the entirety of the other God of... Gods of War. God of Wars. God of War. Um, Although I will say that this uh, this latest God of War is part of, I think, what could be considered a reboot, because I guess it uses Kratos from the old games, but I don't know how much continuity is really kept between those Kratos and the new one with the beard that is a dad. I thought it was the same one, but um, I guess chat correct me, correct us if we are wrong. Um. One thing that I was going to say, uh, actually, let's save that. Let's save this asterisk for after we finish reviewing here. Best art direction, not really interested. Best music, uh, God of War, Bear McCreary. Best performance, Games for Impact. What does that mean, Games for Impact? Best ongoing game, oh, Final Fantasy XIV. I'm sure you you uh, agree with that. What was the category? Best ongoing game, so something that keeps being updated. If so. I wonder why World of Warcraft is not there. Has World of Warcraft really fallen off as much? Yeah, Blizzard isn't doing so hot lately. And even though they did release uh, the new Dragonflight game. Mm -hmm. That's another asterisk that we should come back to. Uh, best indie game was Stray, so Stray did win, win something. Best mobile game was Marvel Snap, which I've heard very good things about recently. Don't really recognize any of the other ones except Genshin Impact. Best community support, Final Fantasy XIV again, because obviously. Uh, innovation in accessibility. I don't know what that means. Best VR or AR. I don't know any of those games. Or maybe I do know Among Us. Best action game ba Bayonetta. I was gonna. I was just about to say Vionetta, like the Sony Vio. <laughs> <laughs> do they make those anymore? I don't think so. Nope. At least if they do, I've never heard. Okay. Or I haven't heard of them. Sony Vio 2022. 
uh, best action game God of War and best role playing game Elden Ring uh, that makes a lot of sense uh, best fighting game Multiverses which uh, you know I, I was rooting for the King of Fighters 15 uh, so my my team didn't win on that one they apparently also had Jojo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle R and Sifu which I've heard for some people it's not really a fighting game but does have fighting elements I've also heard the same thing best family game Kirby and the Forgotten Land never heard of it Nintendo Switch Sports best sim game Mario and Rabbids uh, no best sports game I don't I don't yeah not really my thing best multiplayer games Splatoon 3 oh that's interesting uh, content creator of the year, Ludwig. I don't know who that is, do you? I mean, I know of that guy. I guess he's like a variety streamer. Oh, I see. Well, it must be quite popular. I wonder why we weren't in the running. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we just didn't make the submission. I think we were probably in the sixth spot. Um... Best debut indie game, Stray. Best ad adaptation, Arcade uh, League of Legends, which is, I think, a Netflix show. Most it's actually very good. Yeah, I've also heard good things about it, but I, I just have too many other things to watch. Most anticipated game, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, best esports game, ba Valorant. Best esports athlete, I don't know any of them. Team, coach. Well, so esports now have coaches too. I guess that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, certain, certain, certain ones do. And best esports event, which was the League of Legends World Championship. Evo 2022 was there, which would have been my pick for that one, but again, uh, didn't really see that. All right, with that, let's let's actually get back to the game. And actually, I need to I need to fix my glasses. I will be back in just one second. I could just say do this. Alright, and uh, I am back. Sorry about that. As usual, fogging issues. Um, so, uh, what I was, uh, what I kind of just wanted to talk about, specifically since we're playing Elden Ring, is just the idea of suggesting that Elden Ring has a good storyline. And I'm not trying to be combative here. Generally, uh, generally, you know how I lo love to pick fights with everyone. Uh, this is not the case today, though. Uh, you are a rather ornery fellow. I, I am. Uh, I am known for my fight picking. But what I was trying to suggest was simply the fact that while I think that the world building of Elden Ring is superb and uh, I know that every boss and every enemy has like a little story and every weapon has stories behind it, it's a really fully fleshed out location, uh, the lands between. I don't know that the game itself has a good... Uh, I wouldn't awarded for a good storyline and not that i don't think that it ha doesn't have a storyline but i think that in order for you to understand what is happening you have to go through such depths of research that enjoying the storyline is actually not something that happens very often yeah i mean i think that uh it's not the, the storyline isn't super apparent to me either feel like it's uh, more like something that exists in the background so, um, I don't know if I would if I would have necessarily given it that award I mean Elden Ring certainly deserves a lot of kudos but story I, I don't know about story yeah yeah and so you know there's there's certainly a subtext that you can uh, 
say, you know what, great. This, uh, you can certainly reward the story, the story that it crafts, but I would not, I would not award it simply because it is so, uh, for a lack of a better term, inaccessible. That's a, that was kind of my thought on that. For some reason, I got signed out of Steam. You got what? I got signed out of Steam. Oh. Maybe you got hacked. It wouldn't it be great if I got hacked in the middle of the show? It could be because of the show. Oh, you think I leaked my credentials? Yeah, it's possible. Oh, wait a second. How much do I need to level up? Anyways, that was uh, that was the Game Awards. They did have that fun moment at the end. Did you see it? I did not. What happened? So, um, the developers of uh, Elden Ring uh, went up to the stage, and uh, this kid in a business suit followed them, almost as if he was part of the awards, <laughs> uh, part oh, of the developers, right. and um, of course he wasn't, so he gave them all time to like say their thing, their speeches, and then at the end he goes to the microphone and says, I just, I think he says something along the lines of, I want to thank uh, reformed rabbi uh, Bill Clinton, and uh, yeah. I, he said something, <laughs> I think he said something like that. And so, um, clearly he wasn't supposed to say that or, or be there, but that is what happened. Yeah, I, I did catch that. I did catch that on the, uh, on the internet. Now, uh, I, that was funny. I, I know you to be a highly subversive figure, John, that, uh, you want to steal people's moments and, uh, this is the this is your bag sort of thing. You, you you're like yeah, you do that, kid. What are your thoughts on this particular event? Uh, I just thought it was so funny how everybody let him get away with it because uh, nobody really. <laughs> it was just so ridiculous because in those award shows, you know how everybody usually, you know, when you're announced, you get up, you like fix your clothing, and then you walk up, and everybody's cheering you on. It was so funny because the kid did the exact same thing and nobody questioned him. <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, it was kind of wild that uh, it got that far. Even as he was up there, uh, you you could have feasibly had somebody just walk behind him and say and like escort him out, but uh, that actually didn't happen. So yeah, kudos to him for crafting that plan. And um, then he got arrested, didn't he? Yeah, he got arrested. <laughs> as, as he should, you probably shouldn't let that sort of thing happen because, you know, he did it for the laughs, which is fine. I mean, not fine, but it is whatever. But it, you could, in theory, have somebody with more nefarious uh, intent do the same exact thing. And that would be a problem. Yeah, I mean, I think that kid was uh, certainly the type that hangs around the... the the less PC corners of the internet, so he could have said like a lot worse things on there. Probably would have been a bigger, a bigger thing. So I guess kudos to him for not saying the things that he probably wanted to say. Jeez, these things are so disgusting looking. Um, yeah, so. So you actually, <clears throat> excuse me, you've actually, <coughs> what? you've actually heard about this uh, person before? No, I just knew that in the, uh, in the, in one of the articles that I read that was covering him, apparently he was like, uh, he was basically just a troll and apparently somebody 
Uh, he had a message to somebody on one of the discords he was on, one of the discord servers he was on, that apparently uh, he was going to do it, and then, you know, I guess when the Game Awards happened, everybody on that particular discord started going crazy. It's like, he's actually doing it. I see what you mean. Yeah, so uh, a very interesting moment that will not be forgotten. Didn't we have some... Uh, I, now I'm trying to remember. We had something happen recently at, at another award show that was uh, of note. Do you remember exactly what, what that was? I'm trying to... I'm trying to remember. I'm not, uh, the information is not slapping me yet. Something that happened in Ward show. Oh, you're talking about <laughs> the Will Smith thing. <laughs> uh, I was like, what is he talking about? Yeah, uh, so award show are not uh, are not safe havens anymore, or they never were. Uh, I think that's uh, that's a lesson here. Nobody is safe at award. Nobody shows. is safe at those award shows. <laughs> uh, well. Anyways, uh, speaking of of award shows, we can stop talking about award shows. I think we had other other stuff to discuss today. Um, since now we have now this show is so professional that we have an, a running list of topics to discuss uh, I will say that I did catch another couple of episodes of Better Call Saul in the past week since we've done this let's talk about that what is it have you, that you've watched so far uh, well there was the trial where Jimmy was trying not to lose his license because of Chuck's nefarious deed of having recorded him. And, um, the, what is it? Sorry, I'm trying to set the stage here, but I'm trying to at the same time do this. Uh, so Jimmy goes into Chuck's house, try to, tries to destroy the tape evidence. This is observed, witnessed by uh, Chuck's friends. I mean, his co-worker and the, the, the old-timey detective that he hires. And of course, he goes to trial, uh, and Chuck is trying to take away his license, his law license. Um, and he does this thing where he has somebody implant a battery on him. Uh, and it's actually a guy that we see later in Breaking Bad, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's where that that character comes from. Yeah, Hewell. Yeah, exactly. He's the big guy that hangs out in Saul's office and usually stands there kind of like a bouncer and occasionally does odd jobs for him. I forget. Does that guy actually make it out okay from Breaking Bad? Or is he also a casualty? Well, I guess spoilers for Breaking Bad, but uh, he, uh, the last scene that we see of him he was being questioned by, uh, I guess, I guess Hank was questioning him, and then some other DEA officers were questioning him, and then like the last thing that happened was Hank intimidated him by saying, you know, uh, you now that you're in witness protection, you know, you, we have to keep you here, we have to keep you safe because Heisenberg can go crazy and he can kill you, uh, and then you know he was just like really, really scared, uh, and he was like last left in like a. A, a weird like a weird little house and then we didn't really hear from him again not, okay. even, not even after the time skip. so for all we know he's still he's still okay he's still in that room <laughs> he's still in that room yeah <laughs> um but yeah so he will implants the battery on him chuck is doing this sorry jimmy is doing this thing where he's like uh, your illness, does it, does, do you actually sense electronics around you? And Chuck is like, oh, do you have a phone on you? And he's like, yes, I do, but there's no battery. 
and then he's like yeah that's why it doesn't affect me but then he's like but you've been wearing a battery this entire time almost as if he was a he's a magician or something like that uh which kind was kind of a hokey but i guess it uh it got the point across and i think the reaction that he got from him was just what he expected it wasn't the fact that he placed the battery on him that was going to make the case it was just the reaction that he uh uh, what do you call it? Just put forward. He he essentially sounded like he was a crazy man when he was trying to uh, defend his point and saying you have to take away his license. He's a menace to society or something like that. Right. And, uh, and everyone in and court you, saw you that. Wouldn't tolerate, you wouldn't tolerate the chicanery. Yeah, the chicanery of having his brother be a lawyer. Because, I mean, for as much as Chuck suggests that he's doing this for the law, he just want uh, Unless there is some other evidence that I haven't seen, really what he wants to do is to stop his brother from being successful at this particular job. It, is, that, is that a fair reading of, of Chuck's uh, intentions with Jimmy? Because he doesn't hate him. Like, like he doesn't want to kill him. He just wants him to stop being part of this system. Well, I think that, yeah, he doesn't want to kill him, but uh, he certainly resents his brother. And I think it's just because he thinks that, um, well, I mean, I feel like Chuck thinks that, you know, he, I, I guess Chuck has the brains, but, you know, I guess Jimmy always had the charm. And so he didn't like that because I guess it also uh, just made it hard for people around him to like him when he was always put up against Jimmy. So he definitely resents Jimmy. That's something that's pretty obvious. I'm sure there's going to be sl probably some more exposition as the show moves forward, and and I'm being very reductionist by suggesting that that is his, uh, that is all that is uh, his volition. But I think that's that's really the large of it. I think that's a significant part of it, from my perspective. So so out of curiosity, since we're on the topic of uh, his meltdown, how did, what did you think about the actor's performance in that meltdown? Uh, it was quite good. Uh, I mean, I, I would certainly believe... Uh, he essentially went from zero to 60. Uh, <laughs> he seemed so controlled for a moment, and then... No, he was just like, oh, I'm a raving lunatic now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. Uh, I, I really enjoyed how... It was basically also all done in one shot. How he recited the entirety of that like crazed, crazed di dialogue or monologue, just one take. Yeah. So he was um, obviously Jimmy won the case. I, I don't know if victory really is the proper term here because his license is suspended for one year or he can't he can't work on the law for one year but at least chuck didn't get what he wanted yeah and jimmy he actually looked kind of remorseful after that. he didn't actually want to do that but uh, he did. well i think at this point the gloves were off right because chuck went, went through such lengths to try to uh do this to his brother that I, I think Jimmy really had to respond. And I think at least after the trial, he does have the right attitude in the sense that, you know what, I, I am essentially done with him. I don't want to deal with him. And even when his wife or his ex-wife comes to like ask him for help, he says, I don't want to do, I don't want to deal with him anymore. Well, but I think he still feels remorse just because you know, it is his brother and he did. He did spend a, lot, a large part of his life uh, just caring for him and this uh, this mental illness that Chuck has. Yeah, it is it is just frustrating from that perspective. So that happens, and then really the only thing that happens in the next few episodes that I saw was that um, uh, he has to he's trying to sell off his airtime from the TV, and so he makes a commercial. And the commercial uh, is the beginning of a better call. Sorry, not Saul Goodman. Yes. 
He did use the name Saul Goodman for the first time. So I, I was trying to understand why we were spending so much time on the commercial plot. And it's like, oh, it was because it is the origin of Saul Goodman. And, and that was the point. I guess you could say that. I guess you could say it's the origin of Saul Goodman. Um, yeah, so that's gonna that... be like how it's gonna be like how in those uh, all those YouTube comments if you've ever bothered to see YouTube comments of uh, Breaking Bad videos how everybody's like this is the moment where Walt became Heisenberg I guess now <laughs> this is the scene where everybody in the YouTube comments will be like this is the moment where Jimmy became Saul Goodman Yeah, I guess so for by doing commercials for commercials <laughs> It was such a middling thread. Uh, like I said, I didn't re understand why we were spending time in following him trying to make this commercial. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what I saw. And then on the other side of the story, it was um, Mike. Actually, not really Mike. It was actually just some background on. Um, Gus and uh, Hector's uh, operations and what's going on with them. I guess Hector is forcing Gus to transport his stuff. But it seems like Gus might have a plan and I don't exactly know. Once again, it, it's the sort of thing that I, I, I would have thought that Gus... I think that he has some plan cooking but it is not very obvious right now and it does it right now it kind of just seems like he's getting pushed around yeah i mean from what i remember uh, hector certainly was being a jerk to gus just because he slighted him against uh don eladio so i guess we'll see how that develops i guess you'll see how that develops yeah, we'll see how that goes. But another thing that was shown was actually um, that he went to this place to check out. Uh, I think it was like a a site for his future washing machine um, site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I was uh, I was trying to understand cleaning. why this was significant again, and it's like, oh, it's it's the origin of the laundromat. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why it's significant because uh, you don't know how it gets created yet. You do know it gets created. Yeah, exactly. So, some interesting stuff, some some interesting background there, uh, but nothing nothing too much more really to talk about in that story so yeah that's uh that's where i'm at cool. I, I guess uh i guess you're already starting to get to the uh the beginning of the threads with gus fring and uh you're just progressing on the jimmy slash chuck thread. so that's it yeah yeah so that's uh that's it for better call talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that uh, I'll keep watching. Still, this is still season three, so we'll see what happens. By the way, where are you at in the game right now? I'm seeing you like dove into some weird wooden place. Yeah, I think in I'm That's in a good. in a cave called. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Well, I, I clearly I don't know what the cave is. It is a cave close to Morn. Yeah, somewhere here. Okay. It's a it's more of a mine actually than than a cave because there's a lot of uh, enemies that are miners. So that's kind of cool. I think they're dropping, supposed to be dropping some stuff for uh, equipment forging, but since I've never actually delved into that mechanic, I don't actually know if they're valuable. Uh, 
What are you doing on your side of the world? I'm just progressing where the uh, bonfires tell me to go. I actually didn't know, but in the map you can mark places. Oh yeah, I think I did that once for a place that I wanted to come back to. Yeah, and there's like a giant blue beam of light that emanates from it. I wonder if I can... Have you been watching any any show recently? A show? No, I haven't watched any show recently. Well, actually, I did finish uh, the Sand. Finish that show. Um, have you watched any of it yet? Or? No, I have not. So, I I definitely like the show. Uh, it started out extremely strong. Um, but I will say that, uh, you know, if you ever do decide to start watching it, there's a point halfway through the series where we start on this thread that focuses on, like, this young girl character, uh, and basically how she, like, um, I, I may have mentioned this to you before, but it's basically just a, a story about her, and it's tangentially related to Dream, which is the main character of the show, Morpheus slash Dream. Uh, and it's certainly full of a lot of cool ideas, a lot of cool characters, but uh, I feel like it was ju it just tried to do a lot in like the span of three episodes. There's like three particular episodes where it just focuses solely on that, uh, and it just it, it opens up a lot of threads. It doesn't it 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 tries to do its best to close them all, but in doing so, it just leaves a lot. It, it just makes a lot of the endings or a lot of the conclusions that are made like feel kind of stiff and contrived. So I will say that the second half of the show is a lot less strong than the first half. Um, the second half of the show, it has these three episodes which aren't particularly strong, but I would say that the season finale uh, does pick up. It, it does return to form. It's still, it, the, the, the last episode is pretty entertaining. Um, so. Overall, I would say I would rate the show a, a solid 7 out of 10. Uh, when it was doing the things that it did best, which was usually uh, the visual style, the cinematography, and you know, overall the, the characterization, the themes, when it, when it did that at its best, it, it was easily a 10 out of 10. Uh, when it wasn't doing it so great, it was like a 6 or 7 out of 10. So uh, that's, that's my review of the Sandman, I think. If you don't have anything uh, on your plate that is uh, immediately better than a 7 out of 10, I would certainly give this a watch. Sounds good. Do, do you know if it has uh, like a second season or anything like that? No, but it did get approved for a second season, so I guess enough people liked it. Wow, I got killed. That's frustrating. <sighs> okay. Do you know if that's uh, actually happening anytime soon? I don't know if it's happening soon, but I do know it is happening. Very cool. I'll have to add that to my list, but I, I gotta tell you that it's going to be a while before I catch something like that. Fair enough. I know how busy you are with uh, the that British cook-off show. <laughs> yeah, that is that is my I passion. I don't know if you actually watched it. I do not. <laughs> but I know. I, mean, I remember enough. watching. I remember watching it a while back, and it was pretty entertaining, but not something that I would watch regularly. <sighs> don't you hate it when you? Um, 
go to a place and you are working your way through it and picking off enemies one by one. And then all of a sudden, some mob overtakes you and then you have to repeat the entire slow process all over again. <laughs> yeah, I, I do this like that. Uh, that is Elden. Or that is Dark Souls. Yeah, well... Are you going to give Market any tries today? Ah, uh, well, at this point, if I can get my runes back, sure. However, will that be just a way of <laughs> losing my runes again? I don't know. Maybe after I level. I'm going to say that it is highly unlikely that I do that today. But that will be the next thing that I do after I finish this cave or, or mine or whatever you call it. Ever since I got this new graphics card, I will say that I do appreciate the visuals and all that make better. It is certainly a well-designed game. Alright, let's see what I can do here. Maybe I can try to kill this thing from over here. I feel like if, uh, I think that eventually VR will get to the point where, and not necessarily VR hardware, I mean more like VR software, like, you know, just modifications to games. Maybe there's going to be like a piece of software that creates modifications for games that already exist. Um, I, I kind of hope that one day soon, there is enough advancement in VR where there is the ability to make certain games, like maybe first first person games first, uh, make them VR compatible so that you're able to strap on a headset and then just walk walk around in the maps. And then hopefully, uh, you know, in the future, it makes more games compatible like, you know, Elden Ring. Because I, I can't help but think how cool it would be to just strap on a VR headset and walk around in this room. Yeah, that would be something, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily play the game or, you know, try and try and do Dark Souls mechanics uh, in VR. Just just remove all the enemies and then walk around in the, in the world and kind of enjoy the sights. I feel like that would be very cool. No, absolutely. I mean, that level of exploration would be quite uh, nifty for, I feel, a lot of open world games. Oh, well, we'll, we'll get there somewhat, someday, I'm sure. I don't know if it'll be with it during my lifetime, but uh, <laughs> that'll be delightful. I don't think we're that far away from it. I don't think we're like space travel far away from it. Well, you never know. Space travel far away from it. Uh, now that's a metric. Yeah, I mean... I guess you could say we're not even that far away from that since they're having, like, joy joyrides in the atmosphere, aren't they? I don't know if there's joyrides to the moon yet for, like, the very rich people. I don't think that's uh, there yet. I did overhear from one of the science podcasts that I follow that they are starting to send people back to the moon. And I think they're starting with robots as usual, but I think they'll be sending astronauts pretty soon. Pretty soon after that. So, uh, yeah, that's happening. But uh, actually it's, on it's that actually topic. quite slow. It's actually on that topic. 
I did have a controversial question. Okay, what is what is your controversial question? All right. Do you think that there is an American flag on? Uh, I believe that that was the case. Yes. All right. Now, do you believe that men, that an American man, stepped on? I I think that is that is how that story goes. Yes. Okay. That's true. I actually believe that. Too. Wait. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, there is a subset of people that don't believe that it happened. Oh, you mean like the moon landing denialists? I guess you could call them that. Yeah. I was trying to, when you were questioning me about that, I was wondering if you were, if you had actually encountered some new evidence or something like that. No, no, I mean, I'm sure we could look up some evidence towards the contrary if we really wanted to, but I didn't have any. I was just curious that maybe if you had any. Didn't want to be contrarian for no reason, John. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, it, it uh, that actually happened as it as it was recorded. Correct. I got killed by a giant lobster. I hate those lobsters. these miners well these miners sure are tough despite the fact that they look like scrawny people but there's way too many enemies in Elden Ring that just look incredibly frail but they've all got just like that old man and strength it's uh, kind of ridiculous <laughs> Do you hope to be like an Elden Ring uh, NPC one day just like one day I'll be mowing my lawn at uh, 60 years of age, some punk kid throws a rock at me and then I suddenly just like uh, lift my lawn mower and chuck it at him. <laughs> Even though your your arms look very skinny and very frail. Very frail, yes. <laughs> I mean, if you, if, if one can't achieve like, you know, Herculean physique. At least you can hope to achieve that. Well, yeah, so one thing that I, we actually didn't talk about last time was uh, this uh, Kanye West controversy. Well, why don't you, uh, why don't you, uh, I only read about it superficially. It, it sounded like you had uh, some interest in discussing it. So why don't you, uh, why don't you tell us what happened? Uh, I mean, what happened was basically that he was just being, he, he was just like off the rails. That's basically what happened. Like if you, I guess, what was the last thing that happened? But the last thing that happened with him was he showed up in, uh, what's it called? That Alex Jones show, I guess? Yeah, and I saw a clip of that. It's funny because he starts talking, I, I forget what the exact thing, I, I only read this like two or three weeks ago. And uh, he said something along the lines of like that he liked Hitler. Was that was that the line? Yeah, that's exactly what he said. <laughs> and so it's funny because then Alex Jones is, is like, "Wait, do you mean that you uh, like some?" He he like makes a most more conservative like version of what <laughs> Kanye said. So he was yes. trying to save him, but clearly Kanye didn't take. <laughs> he kind of just like, "No, I like him. I I like Hitler," which was a. Uh, yeah, it was kind of yeah, he wild. says he likes Hitler. He says that, uh, just reading off of what NPR is, one of the headlines is saying, I see good things about Hitler. That's one of his quotes. Uh, so yeah, he just went off the rails and it's like, what is happening? And I don't know if you saw what he was wearing. Uh, yeah, he was wearing a mask of some sort. And yeah, he was like in a gimp suit. What, what is, yeah. Um... So I don't know if he ever 
explain why he was dressed that way. Uh, I'm sure maybe that was part of the interview that I didn't catch. But I think, uh, at least from, again, I've only read very briefly about this uh, situation. But it, it seems to me like maybe he has been going down this path slowly within the last few years. Um, I guess I don't know if he's, I guess by path, do you mean like that he's been becoming more conspiratorial, that he's been becoming, I guess, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, it was, I heard that he, oh, he always had some level of anti, uh, uh, black, uh, thoughts, but that they didn't necessarily make it to the headlines, so people didn't actually think too much about it. But it's only oh. now that he has developed more anti-Semitic views that people, and it's more overt that people are paying paying attention to it. So I think at this point, I, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to excuse the things that he's saying because obviously they're very awful things. But I mean, I did watch clips of the way that he was reacting and I honestly feel like at this point it's not that he's trying to you know gin up business by being controversial I honestly feel like he's he has some mental issues that um, you know that are actually you know very very harmful for him and I think that I think that what's happening with him is actually this really bizarre situation where he has so much money and power that nobody can really talk to him, talk some sense into him or get him help because they're so intimidated by him. And he's just sort of doing this, basically saying these crazy things uh, and he's not really getting any help for it because... You know, because of that, because either the people who are who are at his same level have tried to reason it with him, you know, kind of don't want to deal with it anymore. And the people who, you know, aren't on his level, you know, are just too intimidated to talk to him. So he's kind of stuck in this bubble where, you know, he's saying these awful things, but I actually think that, you know, he's actually genuinely not well in the head. Well, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, if that really is the case, I, I can't imagine that somebody uh, of sound mind would harbor these views. But uh, yeah, that was a uh, that was pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what is happening. I don't know the end of this, but I certainly hope that he does get help. Because, uh, yeah, it's. It's not. It's not. It's not a great seeing him be that unhinged, because uh, it certainly does not look very. Certainly not a good look, and certainly not very hot. Give me just one second here. Um, yeah, that's, uh, it's kind of sad to hear. Uh, let us, let us hope that he gets some help. Uh, yeah. Very unfortunate. I mean, ultimately, ultimately that's my take on it. I mean, it's possible that he is perfectly fine mentally and he's just saying this crazy stuff because he wants to. But that's just the way that I read it. That's, that's the way that I'm kind of seeing it because I, I do know that he has, uh, diagnosed, uh, bipolar disorder, but... I don't know, it's just what I see. Ah, <sighs> wow, the same exact thing. So frustrating. Yeah, 
so that's that. We're actually quite close to wrapping up here. Any uh, final topics of exploration, uh, John? Yeah, did you know that uh, Fortnite has a collaboration with My Hero Academia? No, I did not know about that. Fortnite? So Does it, I feel like Fortnite has a collaboration with everything at this point. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? True. Yeah, I mean, it had a collaboration with Marvel. May have had one with Naruto. Had one with DC. Had one with Bad Bunny. I believe they, they also did something with uh, Marshmallow, was it? Did they? Fortnite? What, didn't, uh, wasn't Marshmallow inside the game? Or a version of his, an avatar of his just playing music for like some concert in Fortnite? I think you're right. I think they also made like a little character model. Yeah. So I think at this point Fortnite has become more of a platform rather than a, a simple game. So no, I, I wasn't aware that they have a collaboration with My Hero Academia, but I can't imagine that's too strange for them. It's. I'm surprised that you never played Fortnite even though... Uh... You were a big PUBG player back in your <laughs> early days. I, yeah, I was a, a huge PUBG player, as everyone knows. Uh, <laughs> everyone knows about my storied history with PUBG. But no, I, th I think I saw it, and I said, you know what, maybe not for me. Actually, have you been following along with My Hero Academia? I haven't. Best to watch the first season and bits and pieces of the other seasons, but I haven't kept up. With it. I think I saw up to season three, and that was it for me. Well, there it goes about 6,000 runes I'm not getting back. Ah, such is life. Anyways, I think we're essentially at our ending time, so let's go ahead and wrap this one up. I'm tired of this tunnel. I, uh, I am very frustrated, even though we started this show suggesting that maybe the weekend would help us relax and simmer down on some of these feelings. I think I'm going to uh, rage for the next couple of days just because of this loss. That's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so it goes, uh, so it goes. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you very much, John, for uh, appearing on today's show. Uh, let me go ahead and switch my things here. Ah, I wish, uh, again, I, I wish there was a simple way to cut down, cut down on my audio without having to go all the way to the systems menu. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your time today, uh, your thoughts. Uh, it's going to be some time before we uh, go back on this pony, most likely 2023, so uh, 
get your New Year's resolutions ready, as they say. Any any parting thoughts from your end, John? Uh, not much. Just uh, I guess have a great holiday season, and uh, if anybody's looking for a part-time co-host, you know I, I do have I am available. I'm sending out those resumes now. I guess since I have this career change. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, good. Let's uh. <laughs> Let's let's give it the old the tap room tales bump right here, John's resume for co-host. Um, <laughs> good, best of luck with that. Let me know how it goes. Hopefully you land on your feet. Uh, but for everyone else, if you are so inclined to follow my ex- exploits, uh, I do have one last uh, stream in me today, and that'll be tonight at uh, close to 11 Pacific Standard Time, where I'll be playing Super Metroid. So you're, if you're a fan of the retro games, uh, come on in and join in. And if not, I will I will see you in 2023. Uh, so uh, stay thirsty, Wolfkin. We'll see you again.